All right, there we go. Let's get started. So, um, yeah, you'll see like, there's a screen with a map on it, and you might want to make that one big if you get, particularly if you get sick of uh, looking at my face, because uh, um, that this workshop's going to be about something that they said was impossible. We're going to design a new signalized junction from scratch in the next hour. <laughs> um, if there's anything I say that you don't understand, or any ideas you have, or something you want to say, please use the comments. I'll be I'll be tracking those got two screens set up so i might look a little bit mad but i'll be going uh, backwards and forwards i was like a normally when um land or do events i like to put myself in a little room and have people come in and, and show me designs and then uh, have a look at it because uh my background is i'm a design engineer i uh, work for a company called urban movement i'm their technical director for walking and cycling but i'm probably most famous at the moment for being chris boardman's technical sidekick up on the B network in Greater Manchester. And I also used to be uh, Andrew Gilligan's technical sidekick when he was the cycling commissioner of London. So I've, I oversee a lot of designs and do the checks for them and, and came up with things like the cycle um, level of service tool and the uh, junction assessment tool, which we're gonna use today. So that'll be quite exciting. So I came up with a lot of these things to, to help me assess designs and to check them. So we're going to use some of those today, and I'm going to go through a design of a signal junction. So, we're going to, so that's enough about me. So by all means, stick stuff in the comments. I'll have a look, or as I'll crack on. So if we were all in the room. I would have asked you, like I normally do, to just like put your designs on the table and we go through. And it's like, oh, have you thought about, you know, doing this a bit like that and shifting that? And we could get the pens out, and it'd be a lot more kind of interactive. I'm trying to recreate that in digital format by using uh, AutoCAD on your screen there and we'll just kind of zoom on one of the limitations is it's a bit harder to jump around screens so you're gonna to have to take my word on some of the things but i'll try and make it as clear as possible so i've actually chosen the junction i chose one at randomly this morning a junction that i've never looked at and we'll all have to figure it out together of how it works and how we're going to change it um kind of roughly know where it is so uh let's let's get cracking um it's in this area so if, uh, I'll see there's a few people from Liverpool and Leeds. So we're down south, I've chosen one. Here is the UK, and you can see it's just on the kind of a uh, heading northwest from London. In fact, that line's uh, a direct line from where I work to my house. So I've got a slight vested interest in this one. Wouldn't it be nice if I can get through this junction? So zooming in, it's the A5, so it goes all the way to Wales. So quite a busy road that we've got on here. I'm going to zoom in on this bit that says Edgware. And I thought we'd look at this junction. So um, I've got my standby blocks lined up. But let's have a look at it in, um, in an aerial view. Okay, and we'll zoom right in there. So I'm hoping that's coming through nice and clear. This is what junctions look like in the UK. So first things first really when you're assessing junction i'm hoping this is a useful way i mean we could talk about the theory but i thought we'd just design one you can see how how i go about it how your method is so much better but but some of the shapes that we use and some of the approaches that i take might be uh interesting indeed kit learn by doing uh, everybody wants that on your first day of work you want someone to sit and go no press that press that and so yeah there's a a thousand books you can read you can see i've i've read all these thousand books and um but like and so you can learn how to do it, but it's like no you just have to do that just those little little shortcuts and things that you do and uh, i think i've got redesigned signal junctions down to as simple as it could ever possibly be and uh, particularly using some of the tools that are out at the moment so hopefully it's of use anyway we should get cracking on because uh, it's almost impossible to do this in an hour and i've already spent five minutes just uh going on about stuff so let's have a look at this junction so how does it operate now uh, if you can see there's a couple of things that i've picked up on already um one look here you see that from the arrows we've got ourselves a band right turn that way so that's going to influence what the uh what the method of control is and if i say any term don't be embarrassed just say what on earth does that mean and i'm quite happy to explain it as we go through because there's so much terminology in 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 the design of signal control junctions and uh, i sometimes do courses just explaining them all but i'm kind of jumping in a little bit today so if you don't know what a method of control is by all means shout i'm quite happy to, to spend two or three minutes explaining that but anyway this this uh we've got a band right there and we've got a band right there 
all of the movements for cars seem to be open. So this one here, where they're kind of bunching up, is it two lanes, is it one? Just a little quick one. They can, looks like they can go left, ahead and right. And I'd confirm that by zooming into Street View and just seeing what's on the headers, but I'm I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here. So we've got a ban right here and we've got a we've got a ban right here. So that's gonna give them some kind of like method of control option. So so what do I mean by method of control? It's the way the junction operates. So who goes where and when. Now I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. I'm, we start with like um this main arm here, the actual A5 itself. Um so we say probably the first stage, so that's the first operator, this slot here will be running at the same time as this lot. So the cars there and the cars there are be running in that kind of first stage. Now we've got like a, a no right there, so they'll be rolling through. And this right right turn here has got quite a long, we got some interesting stuff going on here. So it's quite a long way back, so it looks like there's a heavy right that going on. Now we're going to have to bear that in mind with whatever we do that we need to maintain some kind of heavy right. So with it being, if it went at the same stage as this, so you release them at the same time, they're probably not going to go anywhere because this is the main road. So I think this will drag over into another stage and potentially have its own one while this is stopped. So I think there's going to be like a stage one with this lot running with the right. Then I think probably going to be what we call an early cutoff where you shut something off to let a right kind of clear out. And these will be going while these are held to get that one to clear. So that's happening in the stage two. Now I, I did have a little jump around. And it might look like there's some pedestrian crossings here, but they're not under green man operation. These these staggered here, this one here, this one here, you're just kind of running when there's a gap in the traffic. But these here are under signal control. So there's, there's a push button to be pressed there to get across. So I think in that stage two, when these right turners are going, that these are allowed to go then. So you're clearing that out. And, and one of the... The rules of like a design signal junctions is is reducing that kind of lost time as we call it and and lost time in traffic uh, engineering is any time when cars aren't moving so if you were to allow uh, peds on all these arms then the cars can't move and that's that's bad form what are you thinking about so i think when these rights are going that these are coming through and then i think the third stage so it's a nice simple operation that minimizes the lost time and and it's inefficient every time you change from one stage to another. I think this lot are released. It's arguably a single lane approach. They're probably just waiting in the middle for this lot to come through and they clear out. The lefts can go easy, so they'll go. So I think all this lot is just let go at the same time. There might be another early cutoff, but, but I doubt it. So this lot are coming through there. And I think when these lot are coming through and these cars are going through, while well, second stage of the pedestrian comes in there as well. That's the kind of method of control. Yes, indeed. Just looking for the comments. So um, that's our operation. That's what we're dealing with. And, and quite a standard one in the UK. In fact, lots of standard junctions in the UK don't even have any green men on them. And pedestrians just kind of have to wait and sprint across. And, and we're in a active travel day today at the moment. We haven't even got quite got to, to cycling, but we, but we will, I assure you. But like uh, normally when it comes to like designing um, junctions that work well for cycling, you need someone to have made a good decision for pedestrians first, and then we'll use that time. So this is quite efficient um, for cars in the fact that when they're turning, then you've got the second one. So there's never a time when cars aren't moving in any of the stages. There's no all pedestrian stage with diagonals. There's, there's none of that stuff going on, but you know, maybe there will be. So, um, the, the first thing I like to do, and, and really the whole reason that we came up with this thing in the first place, me and Rachel Aldrin and, and some uh, campaigners, Dominic, shout out, came up with a junction assessment tool, which is now in the in LTN 120, which Rupert was talking about earlier, was just to like uh, to kind of simplify junction somewhat. So already I might have lost some of you. I probably haven't because it looks like a fairly wily crew. But like we just want to say, well, how easy or hard is it as a cyclist to do all manoeuvres? So if you imagine at a junction like this, let's uh, get the colour going. Ah, oh, don't need it. And so like, let's say you're cycling along and you can do a left, you can go ahead, or you can do a right. And we just basically colour those in and assign points to them depending on how hard or easy it would be to be. So um, it's an interesting one to think. So this left turn here, we say this, so there's three movements. 
to crossroads. So that's 12 possible movements that a cyclist could make here. How easy or hard are they? What kind of score do we give them? So the uh, the left turn there is quite a sweeping radius, and you arrive in, you see that, mixed with the cars. And it's ahead and left, so you don't even know whether they're going to go left or ahead. So you've got a sweeping radius, large truck coming around there. You're going to have to position yourself in the middle of it or, or get way out of the way or just dismount. <laughs> anyway, position yourself in the middle to go around with them, and you're, you're holding your breath. And this is the A5. It goes all the way to Wales. So it's going to be a load of traffic in there that you're kind of dealing with. So that's going to be difficult for most cyclists, even experienced ones. If you're fully bike ability trained, you'll handle it, but it's still going to be difficult. So I'm going to say because of that sweeping radius and the mixing, it's a it's a critical issue when the uh, cycling level of service. So that translates over to the junction assessment tool. So that's a kind of red zero. And I just noticed there this really interesting thing, which you don't get in a lot of junctions, but we've got a bus gate coming through here which is going to be golden for the next stage. So I'm really excited to see that one here. So there's like a, a way of prioritizing the buses. You can stop the cars here and allow buses to move over. So maybe this right turn uh, has got buses on it as well. So they're allowing buses to kind of sweep over as this is cleaned out. That's going to be quite useful because um, we've got a way of effectively getting buses from the bus lane into the center line if we want to grab some space for our friends, the cyclists. So, so I'm banking that at the moment because we're doing the junction assessment tool and seeing how well this performs. All right, everybody still with me? All good. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a load of guardrail everywhere. <laughs> uh, guardrail to make sure you get to the point where you haven't even got a green man to cross anyway and you just have to run across the traffic. Hey, but yeah, there's uh, there's plenty of guardrail going on. So yeah, that's, that's zero. It's not banned. Uh, the head movement for cyclists, well... Yeah, you're positioning yourself in large volumes of traffic. You've got a big old junction to cross. There's potentially two lanes going ahead that then pinch down to one. <gasps> that head's going to be super intimidating as well. Uh, there's a there's a reason this one's difficult. So if, if you're going across and you're mixing in with the two lanes or you try to stay on the near side, they are all going to squeeze down to one there. So that's that's red as well. But don't kid yourself. Most of the the signal junctions we do in the UK aren't going to pick up many scores for cyclists. If they're going to do a right, oh, well, a cyclist has got to hop across one, two, into the third lane to do that right, and then kind of hang around in the junction while other cars are going in there where they're screaming at them to take the gap. It's going to be really intimidating. So zero for that one as well. Now, coming out of this arm, it's a little bit tied to doing a left, but it's still, it's still a fairly busy road. Arguably... Arguably, if that stayed at a single lane approach, you might have got away with calling that left an amber. But I'm still know that this is quite a busy road. So arguably, arguably it's a red. We'd have to investigate a few more things. So it's somewhere between red and amber that left. The ahead, you're arriving with high volumes of traffic. That's going to be difficult. Your right turn, well... We already decided that was, oh, yeah, you can make that one. But, again, you're waiting in the middle of the junction while they go there, while cars are going this way and that way. That's going to be a red. Yeah, you get the vibe. Uh, left there is going to be a red. Ahead's going to be a red. Um, the right turn's banned. So we normally represent in a junction assessment tool as drawing a little black line with a cross on the end of it, so it's banned. Uh, coming out of this one, we've got a band, zero. The ahead, loads of traffic. The left sweeping difficult where'd you go so um like most junctions in the uk if you tighten up these scores that we're doing zero for a black ban um zero for red one point for amber two points for green no sign of any green movements which would mean anybody kind of age eight to 80 would be able to do it whatever the skill range you'd get through fine so it takes a lot to get to a kind of green one and we're, we're going to attempt over the next like a 45 minutes now um to make this all green can it be done? Band turns. I think there's two of them. Two of them that I went through, wasn't it? That this is banned, and that's banned. We've got two band turns here. So anyway, like if you're totting up those scores, we're on a zero percent for cyclists. Zero percent. Just for those that I, I have, I've been using it for years. I very quickly did a pedestrian version of junction assessment tool. It's not out yet. I've been I've been trying to get people to bring it out, but I've been sharing it. Uh, Dead easy for pedestrians to say, well, if there's no green man, it's red, zero points. 
if it's kind of staggered but under control, then it's kind of amber. So we've got one here out of potential four. You see how you can present it as a as a stat. And if it's like a straight across on the desire line and under green man control, then that would be a, a full point, a, a two pointer. So you can work it out for peds, peds as well. So it's not it's not zero for pedestrians. We've got ourselves a an amber movement here that's under control. So there's something for peds, nothing for cyclists. Little points, so not performing particularly well. Yep, go with. Um, yeah, there's no diagonal in there. And like I'd say, like uh, when you're doing the junction assessment tool, if you're doing it for pedestrians, and there's an obvious desire line, maybe like a sports center block there, somebody wants to go across it, and it's not met, then you'd include that and say, all right, that's a kind of band movement. So you'd have a, a lower score, score overall for pedestrians. Anyway, I've got time to go on about that now. Cheers, cheers, yeah. Um, yeah. And see me if you, I can send you a, like a presentation on the, the pedestrian junction assessment tool if you want. That's all good. All right. So, where were we? Oh, well, we, we're trying to do something about it. So, where do you start with these things? Where do you start? So, um, one, I was excited about this bus stop here. And we're going to pretend now, we're going to pretend that um, we're going to get a pop up cycle lane going down here. So there's a pop-up cycle lane going on here, and we need to somehow mix cyclists back in on this side. There, there's our leap. So if you have got a pop-up cycle lane, um, yep, yeah, I'll, I'll give you my details. In fact, I'll put my email in the thing now. I don't think we can get it anyway. Anybody that wants the pedestrian one, I'll send it to you. Okay, there you go. Um, right, yeah. So what are we doing? So uh, you're looking for looking for slack space, and, and normally it comes in with our friend the central hatching, central hatching and islands. That's the space for cycling, and you stick it in the middle of the road where nobody can do anything with it. But that's kind of what we've got to try and drag into it. Also, looking at the looking at some of these footways, the the massive. I'm just gonna uh, pull out a dimension and see how big that is. Look at that. 12 meters of footway. Oh, come on. That's that's pretty useful. <laughs> pretty useful. So we've got quite a lot of footway space. And although like, uh, we don't want to munch pavements away to make space for cycling, it's good to know it's there. 10 meters. 10 meters there. A little bit tighter here. So we've got about five meters here. And you know, we're we're in a kind of local high street town center. So we you know we need a fair bit of footway. So five meters, and it looks like there's a um, fruit and veg stall. There's probably a lots of people lingering on the junction there. So that's going to be our constraint point that we really want to do something about. Maybe try and get a little bit more on there. But we're looking pretty rosy on the amount of footway we've got on the on the actual junction here. Um, and this one here, let's just do a quick measure here as well. Look at that just to show. So like six meters, so a little bit more constrained on that side. For, for taking a pop-up cycle lane through a junction, so let's let's um, let's do some curb lines. Let's do a curb line. What am I doing here? I just have to uh, maximize this a second. Oh yeah, it is. It's all good. Yeah. Nice. So um, I'm looking at our pop-up lanes coming through there, and our bus is moving on there. Well, we haven't got time to redesign the whole links, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna stick in. What could be a new curb line here? I could potentially get that. I could potentially be a little bit tighter on that side. I could potentially grab a little bit of that there as well. There you go. Let's uh, let's do that. Here's our new curb lines. Now it, you'll notice I'm not using Auto Track. I'm just doing this by eye. And I'm going through and I'm basically imagining that those islands aren't there. And we can do this without an island and a straight across movement, which will free up the space um, for our cyclists. It's also going to have a bit of a repercussion when we come to the method of control. So already I know uh, this is a really efficient junction for cars. And anything I do here is going to hit it. So how do we uh, how do we mitigate that? Um, so if, it, if it had an all pedestrian stage, this would have been a doddle. But someone's going to have to get some kind of hit, and it's how we manage it. And the kind of saving grace in London is this bus gate, which I definitely want to maintain. So let's push up, let's push the curbs out as much as we dare. 
and imagine there's some kind of pop-up cycle lane on the approach. Normally, you do get some kind of cycle lanes, and you just go, all right, we'll take the curb out to where the edge of the existing cycle lane is. Put a bit of a radius on there. And I'm going to munch all this space so I can pull, pull that right over. And we'll bring that to around there. Or a parking light on the junction. I'll still maintain a little bit of a reasonable radius on there for the time being. All right, so that's all I'm doing. Pushing the curbs out. Got a two lane approach here. Well, there's a band right, band right turn, and it's normally right turns that that wreck the traffic flow anyway. So I'm saying, oh look, it's single lane on the approach there. When does it double up from? Oh yeah, a bit of a dragons over here <laughs> we'll worry about that one later but like as as lefts tend to not like slow traffic down i'd say i'm i think we can probably make a case that we can do in a head and left there so i'm going to munch one of those lanes away and the arm so i give myself loads of space on this side so we'll uh we'll take a bit of that and actually we'll do a slightly more generous one and i'm going to munch a bit of space from here throw it over here to tie into and then we've got a little bit of a basis of a, of a route going on there so really stealing all the hatching still it it's, it's going to be difficult um to take all this island away particularly if i keep that method of control now if i take all this island i won't be able to separately signal that right turn so already i'm going oh steady did you need to take that much space there maybe we'll keep this island in here and i'll just uh we we'll still keep it with two lanes we could have a an ahead and left so I could uh, effectively do that like this. Just talking you through the uh, process. I'll just bring it over a little bit. All right, so we can still keep this central line. I'm not going to mess with this one. I'm going to munch these ones away and throw them into the side because it's a bit more constrained, particularly there. I'm going to munch these like a minor arms, but I'm going to try and keep the major arm one, albeit this one's not as important, but I need to put like a secondary header on for this slot anyway, and it'll, it's nicer to put it there in the middle. So we'll try and keep these islands, despite what I said before, and just munch away one of those lanes because I'll, we might still want to separately signal that right, or just have it roll, have the opposite, just one just close. So we've got an option for that anyway. I'll, I'll bring the curbs out. This one here, the curb doesn't really need to come out that far, and it's the main road, so we'll just we'll just keep that one kind of the way it is and feed through. Or be if we take it, if someone's put a pop-up cycle in in there, what's given? Probably, probably not that park, and it was single lane anyway. So even though it's like an A road, and we do this a lot on the signal junctions in the in the UK. Oh, well, I can see lots of questions. I'll stop and answer these ones in a minute. Uh, but yeah, so it's a single lane approach and then it's bunched out to get as many people across that stop line as possible. But as there's no right turn again, maybe I've been too nice on this arm. We can have a bit more. There's no right turn. You could get away with just a wide head and left, knowing that lefts always have like an un unobstructed exit. So there's no real delay in it coming through. And they're arriving in one. So it'll queue back a little bit, but you know, maybe we'll take a little bit more off that just to get this kind of link approach for our cycle track. And on that side, that's probably... And I'm trying to minimize the, the sheer amount of curb work I do as well, because it's going to be expensive to, to adjust the curbs everywhere. So like, a, and this one, because it is quite wide, even this one, it is quite wide. We might be able to get away with a, still keeping two lane approach there if needed so i'll bear that one in mind with the cycle track that we might want to mess with all this stuff because we've got loads of space anyway so we've done our we've done our curb lines we've squeezed it as much as we can particularly important to get some more space on this side where we've got our our biggest constraints for putting cycle track in there that's the first run at it we go like oh well, what could we get away with and this is obviously better done with auto track and and all the rest of it but i'm just uh doing a little guess to, to kind of take you through that i'm going to stop and answer some questions now to uh here we go Didn't much for, yeah uh, i agree with andrew who's saying that the uh the modeling programs don't do much for pedestrians indeed not even considered in most modeling certainly in uh in london 
pedestrian modeling rarely ever gets done the whole model uh, the unit the unit of measurement for modeling is the the passenger car unit it's the car so even when you're doing cyclists you're going well yeah that's uh that's 20 percent of a car that that's the way we do it and all these things you know all these old spreadsheets that then became systems from the from the 50s onwards it's all about shifting cars and that is the that is the job the throughput of cars it's like that the pedestrians are something that's happening around it kind of the air stuff so it is an issue and if we want to tackle it that's why i just like uh, have things like the junction assessment tool just to make it really obvious gone oh uh, yeah that's a brilliantly efficient junction high five um from the profession but there's no way for pedestrians to get across the road and the shops there fruit and veg pub bookies high street what are you doing <laughs> you know you've got to ask those questions but I don't think I'm like, well, but we made it work in three stages and there's always cars moving. That's what we're trying to do. So, um, yeah, we we have got some like, uh, we, we've got to look at ourselves in the face and go, is this really right? Can we do something else? So I'm going to show you that. Um, yeah. So people agreeing with that. Uh, yep. Agreeing. Yeah. So we're all agreeing that the modeling software, it tells you what you want. Will cars get through there? Yes or no? How much will it be effective? And still, whatever I do here, we'll have to run through that. I have to say, would it work for cars? And and the vast majority of places that I've ever worked, you've got to come in and out while keeping capacity neutral for cars. Now, the, some places, and then they go, oh, okay, yeah, we really need to get that pedestrian crossing in. And you can normally make a case go, look, how do people get across the road here? You're expecting visually impaired people to just guess when to run across these things, not knowing when the cars are going to be that's not right and you can make some kind of moral case for pedestrians which we're going to do as part of this process in fact we're going to do that now let's make a moral case for pedestrians to get across the road and then we'll we'll tie our cycling into that so while pedestrians are, are walking along our now widened footway enjoying the area they need to get across let's put some pedestrian crossings in that's my handy little uh we can see where the existing ones are and if we didn't want to mess around with the with the gear, then we could just put it on the old spot. And, and you'll notice as well, this is like a joy thing. So you can see how long the pedestrian crossing was. Now it wasn't under control, so it didn't matter. But if that was under pedestrian control, and we can build the curbs out, then we don't need to give the pedestrians as much time to get across the road. So although I'm gonna put them under like green man control, it's actually gonna be not as inefficient as keeping the old curb lines. So let's put them where they want across. Stick some pedestrian crossings in. Bish, bash, bosh. All right. Get in there. Stick some over this side. You notice that I'm uh, I'm putting them in straight across. Well, they were straight across already, but the the rub of this one is going to be putting it under signal control. And what that means so we've got a fairly long pedestrian crossing here so sometimes you'll want to build your curb up just to not have it as long but you know if we can let the cyclists go in this stage as well then it might be interesting more in. so let, let, let's aim for like a hundred percent on the pedestrian junction assessment tool let's aim for that we'll make a case that hey People want to cross the road and we'll see what that does to our method of control and how much of a fight. But this is the fight that you got to have. How do people walk across the road? And the joy of cycling is right now that we've got that time for pedestrians. What does that mean? For our two little friends. All right, so we got some, I can adjust them a little bit ge geometrically, but we've got some nice, good old wide, straight across ped crossings. Now this one's gonna be difficult as well. So we've got a really long straight across ped crossing and I chose to the, to keep that arm. So there's a question, okay, it's under signal control. Maybe when it comes down to the crunch, can maybe still keep that staggered? Can maybe get a pedestrian uh, a straight across cyclist in there but here's here's the real rub that that would do so how long is that yep 
yeah, it's getting a bit long. So it kind of needs a little bit of an arm. That's like a 17 odd meters. So like with a pedestrian walking 1.2 meters a second, like you say, you're going to be like a, having 20 odd seconds or more for pedestrians to get across there. So it's going to be a difficult one to, to, to take all that lost time because as soon as you put the straight across movements in there, they can't go, they can't go, they can't go. Yeah, you're struggling a bit. So you might think on the uh, on the A road, and these how these decisions happen, and you you can debate the morality of it as you will. But this could maybe not go under green man control, and this could stay at the stagger, just so you don't delay it, and you give yourself some more method of control options. You know, and these things happen, and I almost want to do this here, <laughs> just within the UK one. And, and people saying, oh, like uh, I see people are. I mentioned in the Dutch and you know, the Dutch are masters at this stuff, but we have to have to look at it. If if I was in Holland and I was designing, I would have the option of like uh, having cyclists go at the same time as uh, um, motor traffic and pedestrians there, knowing that people can yield. That's a little bit more Danish that approach. They'll they will they will do a kind of circulating stage and just go deal with it, deal with it. Cars. We've got like a huge amount of people getting around by bikes, and that's much more efficient way of getting people through a point. When you haven't got a huge amount of people on bikes, though, it's really difficult to to make the case for the Dutch stuff, particularly if you're working under the you can't affect the capacity of cars, which is still the mantra of our profession. So with that in mind, my boss has had a word. And I'm going to keep the stagger. I'm going to keep those pedestrian ones where they are. Go, all right, I'll give myself a chance. Give myself a chance in the method control. I'll keep the... Uh, uh, and then you go, well, this this straight across on it, one here is getting a bit long. You go, well, actually, if I have a formal crossing there, a formal crossing there, people can get most places. But now I'm going to fight for this one because that one was 18 meters. How long is this one? So, like, yeah, 12, 13. All right, well, it's not as big an impact then if that's part of an old pedestrian stage, which is what we're going to fight of. I've you know I've saved ten seconds by not having the other one straight across. That's the that's the big win there. I'll follow it. Of course we are. But this one, this one I'm gonna re stagger out of sheer evilness. So I've started dropping points on my pedestrian junction assessment tool, but I'm doing it because I'm getting some squeeze to keep the cars going. This is an A road. This has gone all the way from Wales to London, Brian. What the hell are you doing? We can't afford, oh, where are they all going to back up? And they're all going to go into that low traffic neighborhood, which you filtered in the early session you did today. You've given it nowhere to go. They're just going to keep queuing. The congestion is going to get up worse. What are you doing? You're ruining the economy. All, all these pressures are starting to come down. So, all right, all right, we'll keep the stagger that, you know, they've got an amber crossing the pedestrians. All right, we'll, we'll keep that. Sorry about that. Gov, and I'll just uh, stick in there. Might want to shrink it slightly to keep a bit of a stagger there. So, right, okay. This is a cycling session. When are you going to start doing the cycling infrastructure, Brian? Okay, so I know I'm going to do some kind of fight to get an old ped one in there, albeit a cheeky one here that I'm just only have to time off a short crossing there. And even though I can let all these pedestrians go at the same stage, I'll be timing off this arm, not off this long one here. So if you get a jog on, which is why I'm kind of pushing this to get a little bit closer. So you can get a little bit of a jog on and get right the way across. And maybe in the next stage that comes in there, we don't let this one through and, and this one can start rolling into another stage while we let other movements happen. But having that stagger gives me loads more method of control options. So I've definitely got to keep it at this stage to, to be sensible. <laughs> to be sensible, indeed. Go with me. Okay, let's put some uh, cycling crossings in. And here's the big debate of our age. Innies or outies. Now I'm uh, going to represent team team Manchester here. I want to put them on the outie, not the innie. So I'm going to put them further away from the mouth of the junction than the pedestrians. I would do this for a whole bunch of reasons. I completely uh, stack up one like some of the regulations we've got. I've um, done that little bit skewy. 
but yeah, yeah you get the point so we'll put it on the inside then the cyclists have got to come around the back and it means i've got a really small storage space for pedestrians when we start deciding who goes where and who does what um if i put it on the outside i can get a really nice sweeping radius round for the cyclists when i'm planning it rather than them having them to do really tight turns so there's a few wins and, and by doing it this way as well i can get kind of keep that kind of short pedestrian crossing we can go into it there's a whole cyclops thing about that bear with me i'm going to put them on the outside of the pedestrians because it gives me more geometrical options pick some of these up here put our crossings in Hope everybody's enjoying this lovely warm summer day design and protected junctions pass that in open just a little bit now here's the thing now that i'll debate hmm really want that cycling movement to go straight across so let's try and not involve that in the stagger now we could involve with the stagger at least the pedestrians are going there i'll have the cyclists there ah uh, all right we'll do it there, there might be a case that you could have brought the uh the cycle crossing across there so they could do it all in one movement because cyclists will easy make it across all in one in the time that it takes pedestrians to go there so we're letting cyclists go on the same stage they'll do that but the reason i'm reluctant to do that is because this is an a road and i've already taken a load of space and i'm losing a little bit of a q length oh, should we do it anyway go on then go on then do it anyway we'll do it so the cyclists can go straight across Be the pedestrians can do it if they get a jog on but i haven't got a time for that whole width yeah everybody still with me let's get some uh cycle movements in here and really like life begins for for cycling infrastructure forget all those uh advisory cycle lane blocks all you need is the this one here the elephant footprints it's uh if you haven't got this block in your set and you're calling yourself an engineer then uh I despair. Uh, so many people don't have it. And I see them using the wrong markings and for a few years to get these bloody things in. So uh, get yourself an elephant footprint one. I'm going to do the time. We're doing all right. So it can be done, but we're getting there. Well, I've got this on a really little screen so I can see all the comments as well. So that's why I'm thinking myself. All right. So we're starting to look like a, there's some kind of junction going on here. Next, next thing to drop in. We better put some stop lines because that's all you really need to know when you are using any of these uh, modeling bits of software it's where you've changed the stop line that's going to affect your queue length and capacity and everything so we need to know okay how we put our cycling stuff in there we can maybe kick it along a little bit and angle it slightly so that we can maintain that existing stop line and then we say oh it's okay maybe we can kick this curve back and keep the two approaches so in in modeling terms that's going to be all right but for for the time being we'll just kick it back back a bit and that's like a one approach lane that now do that let's get some in from the rest of them so this this stop line's all good that can stay where it is albeit it's now a single approach lane notice and we've got rid of all this island Actually, we decided to keep that island. Yeah, no, we decided to keep the island, but the cyclists are rolling over it. Yeah, so we put that header on it. Might really have to do another little bit of curve line to bring that out. I'll just do that just for the sheer completeness of it. Just do we need a little, probably not going to be that big for the tracking, but we haven't got that to track. They're all right. They're all right. Yeah, so we can put that there and make a big wide ped one run them to narrow island. All right. A little bit of nuance there. <laughs> I'll stick a stop line in there. Again, single lane approach now because we've uh, got all these pop-ups everywhere. Um, what have I missed on the one down here? It is a few that we'd have, we've adjusted where the stop line position. And that's why I was worried about that because I've probably left, lost two car lengths 
and I've tightened the line. So I know I'm, I'm now I'm pushing it here. And I know when push comes to shove, I'll probably be squeezing this back and taking a cycle track there and keeping the three lanes of approach. But I will maintain to my and my former TFL colleagues go, so all right, we've got the bus lane. Buses will roll through, but it's going to queue back a bit. And I go, well, okay, well, when's the bus lane la next mix? All right. Could be all the way back here. But then I go, look back here. It's just the one lane. There's not a huge throughput there anyway. We start having those kind of wider discussions. Do you really need the three lanes there? I'm going to say you don't. God damn it. And I'm having that space for walking and cycling. So there we go. Then the kind of debates that come up in our life. All right, so we've got the stop lines in. Cheers, good. <laughs> uh, right, so we've got the stop lines in. And now really the bit that, you know, we've uh, we've all been waiting for is to uh, draw the cycle tracks in. That's what we've all been waiting for, isn't it? Of course it is. So like uh, this to just kind of show you the options that we've got. So here we go. So we'll have our cycle lane come in there just the approach here's our cycle lane approaching here who knows if it's mixed on the approach um i'll just take this one in here I'll bring it out here and we've got to somehow get it round over to there so there's a couple of different ways we can go but we've got a fair bit of space to do so i'm just going to do this in a in a really blunt way here Remember which way to go. And then our cyclist this way. We've got a little bit of an angle, bend that down. And then on there, doing this super quick. And we've got a cycle track running there right into the back of that parked car. Lovely. And um, we'll just have this. Coming over and around the building. There you go. Well, I'll probably want to avoid that uh, fruit and veg shop, to be honest. So I'm going to take this like this, and then we'll bend it over to that. And I'll adjust this to be a bit shorter. Put the vertex. See what I'm doing. And we'll put some radiuses on there so you can get kind of non-standard bikes through. And we'll wiggle stuff around a little bit and, and see what fits. And try not to go through any kind of um, uh, controller boxes and... <laughs> and benches and seats and infrastructure or we'll be shifting all these signal poles in anyway yeah that, that's that's kind of connected to that and that's connected to that and and while we're here while we're here we'll stick a bit of tactile in for our pedestrians so you can see what i'm talking about with the sheer amount of storage for pedestrians waiting now but they've got all this area to wait if we kind of circulate the cycle track in there so you can find spots to move it might not want that much space but it's nice to have it rather than if we flipped it and the cycle track was going right round it that way you've got like a much shorter area for pedestrians to wait and so they tend to be walking across the cycle track at the at the last minute and you've also got the it's really hard as a cyclist if you released and all the pedestrians are going and you're released on the on the inside it's really hard to sit to not to circulate and not just bolt across Whereas if you're on the outside, you're more likely to circulate around. And within UK regs, uh, we can't have a cyclist go like that as another one's coming there. You can't, um, you can't have a cyclist coming this way as someone's coming that way. So you've got a little bit of a conflict situation. But if we can have the cyclist going from all arms circulating, then we bypass that reg. It's basically like a, a cycling roundabout kind of motion. And then you avoid it. Otherwise, if I was to let a cyclist go there and a cyclist go there, I'd have like a signal conflict that we couldn't allow. You know, we can't do that with cars. We can't do that with bikes if they're separated. So that's the the fundamental way why we um why I think this is slightly more compliant than going inside. So you can't guarantee that cyclists won't bolt into other ones. Albeit they'll see them coming and it's all fine and the Dutch are completely right, but it is completely against our law to do that. All right back with me all right so I'm, I'm sticking a bit of like a ped tactile in there just, just in case i don't get a chance to do all the arms get some tactile in. La, 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 la. Put our tactile in so our, our pedestrians can now cross and then it's like oh how did they get across the cycle track oh well let's put a bit of tactile in for them to do that then you've got plenty of space to do it there's loads of footway to wild from coming across there 
want to think again about the pedestrian desire lines of where they're coming from. Actually walking at the back of the footway, try and get this lined up. I've done a terrible job of lining that up, but they're coming across to kind of line up with where they're crossing. And also another thing we like about Cyclops as well and putting the uh, the crossings on that side is that you can put pedestrian desire line crossing. So if there was ever a time when we could have put a ped in there and, uh, and handled the delay, getting a 25 meter crossing in then uh, at least you've got that option and you see i'm more constrained and tighter junctions that might well be an option to particularly if they're skewed or offset to get those diagonals in there if you've got cyclists circulating on the inside you can't do that it's on the outside you can so the, there's more of a chance of getting top marks in the pedestrian junction assessment tool uh with cyclops another reason why kids i'll just finish off sticking a few tap tiles in there I'm doing this in a terrible way and I'm not putting any radiuses in there and, uh, and the uh, traffic cars at Manchester would be very annoyed at that. But, you know, we're doing the whole junction. So there you go. So pedestrians walking along and they can get to the cross and they've got plenty of space to wait while they're waiting for their green man and they can get off there. The cyclists waiting on a little stop line there can kind of circulate round and we'll go round and we'll we'll finish off the, um, the tracks elsewhere. But, yeah, let's... Actually, let's stick with that one arm. <laughs> I'm going to have a chance to design the whole thing. Oh, go on, let's get back on. Let's get back on. Uh, so we've got to like our cyclists that are merging back there. And then quick, kind of get around this bend and over here. And we'll have them. Oh, I'm emerging. Yeah, there's another cycle track down there, isn't there? God, God. There's our there's our pop up coming in. So our pop ups coming in, and then the bending. Yeah, join that. So we'll need a few giveaways. So when the cyclists are circulating this way, you'll want to give them priority over the cyclists that are merging from this direction, because you don't want to have a giveaway there. I'm going to put this in because you don't want the cyclists to back onto the road so this lot here that are kind of circulating around like that will have to yield at this point a couple of giveaways to the cyclists that are coming off there yeah all good i'll kind of wiggle that around there get that off there all right that is very badly drawn but yeah you get me so again, we'd be putting the tactile in, getting the trial, just finish off doing all the, all the cycle tracks. I'll slide the track coming back in here. Putting these little islands in for, for signal posts as well. Just don't forget that. Here for advanced stop lines at junction, would you put them in? And if so, what? Well, yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a session we can get into advanced stop lines. Just look to the bottom ones. And well, really, if you've got this kind of protected junction, you don't necessarily need them. And already, be trying to put the cycle provision in for a protected junction, you're probably going to have to kick back the stop line. And if you've got an advanced stop line, and great. If you put an advanced stop line in again, so let's uh let's stop drawing this a sec. So let's say there was a nice big advanced stop line here. So really, the main stop line for modelling is going to be there. If I put all the cycling stuff in there, then then great, we'll just use that one. If I put another ASL in there, then I've got the stop line for cars there. I'm using losing more and more stacking space, so it's getting it tricky. So it helps with the efficiency to, to put the cycle crossing movement where the advanced stop line was, but not putting a new one because then you've uh, you've affected your modelling. You might as well make it as efficient as possible. And we... Um, well, both the uh, Cyclops that we've done in Manchester have been more efficient than it was before by, by using these techniques. So, uh, so yeah. And, and just the only really work advanced stop lines, um, if you arrive and it's red, and then you've still got how do you get to it, and you might be moving into a position or squeezing through the near side to get into the advanced stop line as the lights go. And, you know, as a marginal benefit and people block it, and it's just painting. I'm, I'm just... Uh, I'm not really into them anymore. We've fallen out of love many years ago, and uh, will we ever come back to the way we were? Nah. <laughs> that's that's my view on those. I'll just finish so we can have a, a pretty 
tasty looking. Done that all right. I'll just finish that in there. And burn that over there. You get it. And then, you know, we'll stick stop lines in there in a minute. But I'll just I'll just finish off. You know, we've got a bit of a yeah, you know, we've got a bit of a protected junction just just for the sheer completeness of it. We'll uh, we'll do our last lane coming in here. And we'll bend that in there. Coming out there. Mm -hmm. I messed that up. Steady. All right, there's the job. Down there. All right, something like that. So you get it. There's the one that we need. So you go through, sticking the tactile in, getting the crossing in, and then just like uh, start finishing up on it. Um, it's really about the the method of control. Then, so with uh, with our option here, we're we're probably going to let all this lot go. Nice. Maybe have to do an early cut off to let those ones run. But in this case, it, there's, there's nothing else. You, you might want to let the pad stagger in there so we keep that same off, same stage one as we had before. Gone through there. So, yeah, your pad's moving out, which is saving you a bit of time. The rest of it's kind of rolling. If we were to keep a stagger there, we could let something in there. But I don't think the space to do that and keep the cycle lane on the approach. So we'll just let this lot roll while this these pads move. Then in our, our next stage, we'll let the... Uh, the rights filter out and that's going in. Yeah, so that's right. All these go, then the rights. Then we'll let an all ped stage go while our cyclists and then we'll let all these lot go. So there is gonna be uh there's gonna be quite a hit of getting all this extra space. And and when when I remember when we we're doing um Lee Bridge Road, the like in Waltham Forest, the big hits and the big delays came from putting formal pedestrian controls in there. But that's the big fight you've got to have. If you can't win it for cyclists saying, look, how do you get across the road? God damn it. It's a it's a shopping area. So you can have that really big fight. And as soon as you win the fight for pedestrians, well, tack on the back of it and get your protected junctions in there. And actually you'll if like uh the way Cyclops works, say like there was a cycle lane going through there and you had the pedestrian crossing, had to cut across the cycle lane and on the cycle lane on the other side, then it's a longer pedestrian crossing. So that's more time taken out of the, the junction for, for cars, more lost time, as it were. But if you can take that cycle lane, make it the edge of the curb, wiggle it around the back, then you've got shorter pedestrian crossings. That's the efficiency gain. That's why most junctions that we apply that actually have some kind of cycle infrastructure. You get a bit of an efficiency win by doing it. So that's the kind of method of control. I'm just going to look to see uh, if I've got any questions now we've kind of wiggled through and drawn something and got a method of control. Pedestrians can get where they want. Cyclists can all rotate round. It's all good. Not too bad. But there's a there's a delay coming. But at least we can mitigate buses this way. And maybe the, one of the options is to try and get a bus gate in the other way. But it's a little bit more constrained. And you'd be looking at the, can that parking go? Why is it so near to the junction anyway? When you're looking at wholesale changes actually just in the whole junk. You get you get big when you're trying to mitigate that way. So that all the drama is probably gonna come on this area and you'd be kind of squeezed over. We can't fit any cycle in there. But if if someone's made a decision and got a pop up cycle lane in here anyway and just waiting, then yeah, we we can make that work. We can take it through. Um let me read the question, sorry. Uh, the forthcoming changes to the highway code will change your approach to designing junctions. Great question, Roger. So, like, um, with this kind of arrangement that I've got, I kind of think uh, I've been making a case for the outies, but if it was an innie and you had it going straight in there and you could do the kind of yield on turn, you could effectively have this junction working in two stages, maybe with the with the other cops. So all the traffic's going that way. Pedestrians and cyclists are going that way, but anything turning would know to yield if it really got that bold. Now, the, I don't think the new highway 
code changes have got us that far, if we're being honest. I think there's like they have priority, but I, I can't see that it's strong enough to to go through to signal control junctions. Maybe it will. I love it. But then, yeah, we can have a really simple one. And cyclists don't have to go really near pedestrians. We can keep it a lot more straighter in line. And then again, that way, cyclists go that way, pedestrians go that way, general traffic goes that way, and anything turning, yielding. So that's the kind of like the, the, the Danish dream and the way people do it in the rest of the world. But it'll also be difficult for us to give up the sanctity of the green man. So when a pedestrian's going now with this arrangement, get a green man, they know they're clear to go. All they got to really worried about is is passing cyclists, you know, which will be a hoo ha about. But they've got a formal way of doing it. You can tie that in with zebras. So um, so maybe I kind of think there's some inroads. I've been looking at a kind of like a halfway house one where where you could uh, allow turn in the corner style rules that align with the with the new highway code. So you could do that with the yield on turn. But someone like a elderly a visually impaired person could maybe have a a swab key that would call up an all ped stage even if like a delays traffic in there so then you, if if you do do that kind of arrangement on two stages and you get a 40 percent capacity when it'll be a doddle rolling out protected junctions and they'd look just like the the danish and dutch ones do but if we uh if we don't do that and we stick to like the, the green man this is the kind of best option we've got i think uh, uh be it in or out. I kind of think there's more pedestrian benefits for this one um, in terms of storage space. Anyway, yeah, I think that kind of answers that one. <laughs> but I'm going now. I've got plans. And I, I think if we can make that concession to visually impaired people, then we could get a real efficiency gain at our junctions, make straight across pedestrian crossings the norm. And that will be a way you can have six or seven lanes that people are crossing straight across if the turning vehicles have to yield to it. But if you can call up old school British rules for pass card, uh, not everyone's going to do that. Most people are just going to want to cross without a huge delay. Because there's no doubt about it, you'll be waiting a while to get through this junction as a pedestrian and cyclist because you've got to really prioritise the A road to get all that, those cars through. But you know, we'll like a, get like a 20, 25 seconds to do a loop the loop as a cyclist because you're all timing off this pedestrian movement there. All right, okay. ASLs are out of date. Yeah, I kind of think they are. Um, does anyone else think it may be easy to sell cyclic junction to the it's a nice eye-watering colour scheme? <laughs> yeah, are, are they a bit gay? Well, people think that. Then it's like a, it's the clarity when you're there on street. The the eagle-eyed view that I'm showing you here is always difficult. It's going to go, what, who, what, where? Oh, always complex. Can't you just have a footway and a road? And then there's just two things. They've introduced all, all this annoying cycling element. And then, the, well, then who goes where and who does what? Colours one way of making that clear to everybody, like a, the red bits for the cyclists or the green or the blue bit. And then the, the, the footway is the footway and the road's the road. It, it kind of helps with the, the simplicity of it. But you've got to remember that when you come to a signal control junction, it's already gone wrong for human beings it's never going to be a place-making thing. They're always going to be ugly, but they've got to be functional and they've got to be safe. Um, so I'll say, so all those signal poles and all those stop lines and hatching and, and lights, it's always going to be ugly, but you've got a point where there's loads of cars, you've got to deal with it, and signal control is the clearest way of doing it. So when you're down on street as well, people are really enjoying the Manchester ones. They're going, great, yeah, you, you experience it. I'm following my bit, the pedestrians following their bit, the cars are over there. This is great. But yeah, you know, I remember the Guardian calling them jazzy when we had a diagonal one in there because it like at this kind of view, you go, well, there's a lot going on there. But when you're down on the street, you're just riding and you're riding through. That was easy. I'm walking and I'm just following my designer. And I've got, uh, there's nobody hassling me while I'm waiting to cross the road because I've got loads of storage space. And for cars, I'm just on the road and actually where are all the cyclists gone. You know, so it, it's quite simple if you put it down from the, from the, your actual eye perspective but i agree like the selling it on this kind of like plan view of engineers it's always going to be difficult um monitoring going on at the moment with the cyclops junctions fairly in-depth monitoring so uh, we'll be able to tell you the the feedback we've had from people has been brilliant uh i will say 
um, but talk about uh, any conflict between pedestrians and cyclists coming to and from. Well, yeah, that, that's the thing, like, because uh, pedestrians would be crossing the path of cyclists, and if there wasn't any cycling infrastructure, they'd just be walking across. Well, in, in the case of this junction, they'd only really have, like, this stagger as their decent way. They're just waiting to run across the path of um, um, cars. They're just waiting for a gap to kind of leg it. So in this case here, you've got pedestrians fighting for a, for a green man to cross. Get cyclists to help you fight by giving a bit of space to do a protected junction as well. And then you've got all of active travel pushing tight in with bus gates, and we've got this, uh, you know, we've got a chance of winning. That's what I want to I'll say there. Well, I think that's the end of my time. There's some really good questions here, though, that, that I really want to answer. But, but I'm hoping that that debunked it a little bit. It's not that hard. We did manage to to get a concept that yeah would probably get funded if I put a few radiuses in there by by the Department for Transport and, and assessed by Sustrans and going, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, you can do a protected junction. You can see how it fits. It's very efficient. You've got a chance of getting it through modelling, particularly if they're walking and cycling buddy up together. So, um, so hopefully that made sense, and I'll let you get on to your next session now. All good. Thanks for listening. I'll stop sharing. And I'll see what's going on. Yeah, I agree. The colours for cycling stuff is uh, it's always a bit dodgy, isn't it? Kind of with your roof, but signal junctions, what are you going to do? All right, everybody. So, yeah, now, now you know how to do them. You don't have to pay me to come and do them now, but <laughs> much though I'd like you to. But uh, it's not that hard. All right, everybody. I'll, I'll shut this session down now. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>